to suffer need. When you learn to be hungry, I'm talking about learning contentment, you know what it does? It makes you touched with the feeling of the infirmities of those who don't have. But a person who all his life, he has always had everything that he wants, he becomes an oppressor because he does not know what other people go through. That is why it's not good to spoil your children. That's why it's good to make your children deny them. Let them, I remember when I was, when I was, when I was a child, you know, when I was in, in secondary school, you know, Nigeria has changed because of security. There's certain things we have to do now, not because, you know, b- b- because of security and things like that. But I remember, I was in Form 1. My mother dropped me in Bariga. I, you know, my, my, my CMS grammar school. Dropped me, I was 10 years old. I became 11 in May. This was in January. In those days, we'll see January to December. The school year started in January. I still, I will never forget, January 19. <laughs> to show you how it's stuck in my mind. You know, I've never seen anything like that before. They dropped me and the woman said, bye-bye. <laughs> and I was there with my trunk box and everything, one little tiny little boy. I was just looking around different surroundings that I had never seen before. Then when it came to open day, we used to have open day, I think it was after one month or something, you know, I was supposed to go back home, you know, you could go home, you know, I, I think it went on Friday, came back on Sunday, something like that, you know. I was expecting the car to come and pick me. My mom had a driver. She was, at that time, she was working at the, you know, she was in the Ministry of Justice in Lagos. We had official car, official driver. So I was expecting driver to come and pick me. Ah. One of my cousins was a day boy. So I said, ah, cause of our mommy, you know, tell my mommy that, you know, uh, my mommy sent back and said that you should find your way home. The other children too know how the way home. Go and find out how they get there. <laughs> Telling you. Contentment is an inner satisfaction that comes by the fruit of the Holy Spirit, particularly love, joy and peace, you know. And then there's, of course, temperance also, which is self-control. Joy, peace, and long-suffering, you know, and, and, and self-control, you know, that is the inside that satisfies the mind, the will, the emotions, and the body, irrespective of what is going on physically. So whether I'm hungry or not, my body may feel hungry, or I may not have something physically, the, my physical surroundings do not affect my inner contentment. Ah, mommy, I wish they had preached this thing 30 years ago to the church. They preached one half of the message. Don't preach the other half. It's a, it's a terrible thing, oh, Pastor G. See, both. Both. I'm preach prosperity. You know me. I'm a strong prosperity man. But you must preach both. You must have both. Contentment is an inner satisfaction. It comes from the spirit of God, you know, in the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions, and the body. By the love, joy, peace, uh, long-suffering, um, self-control. So that your, 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 your emotions and your body, the mind, the will, and the emotions, and the body are satisfied from inside. They are not satisfied from outside. So when the things are not there, you still have the same peace. So if they take away the car. Or they take away the television. I'm getting home now. Or they take away the mobile phone. Hello. You know, some things we think we cannot do without. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, there are only two things you cannot do without. In actual fact, you can actually do without them, but they are essential for life. Food and raiment. The Bible is a great book. He says, having food and... You see, if your food is because not so for appetite, but for survival, for your good health, then you need raiment to cover your body because of the elements. If you have those two, God says you should... Nothing else should matter. But if you must have this, and you must have that, and you must have that, and when you don't have that, all your mind and your will, and your there's something wrong with you. Shall we put it in the Bible where you have not learned contentment? Because if you have learned contentment, if you have food and raiment, nothing else on the outside will matter. Now, 
if you walk with God with time, they will come. Amen. God wants you to have those things. He wants you to enjoy all things richly. Don't miss that's the other side of the message. You understand? But you see, the point is we must learn how to be content while God is working on those things to bring them. Gain is not godliness. Gain is not godliness. This is the cloak of covetousness. This uh, under which the whole the devil hides, you know, puts a desire in your heart that is not of God, makes you want something before God's time for you to have it, and then tries and transforms the thing by demonic power. Then when you get it, he will now establish you and tell you, hey, hey, you have arrived. Your faith is working. Not you, my brother. You have arrived. Your faith is working. Hey. No, nobody can tell you anything. What did they know? They haven't seen money. That's why they're shouting. Hello. So that gain is God. Is it from? I like you know. I didn't write the Bible, though, but I thank God is there. He has told us the answer to these kind of people. What do you do? Withdraw yourself. So he didn't say fight. You know why? Evil communication will corrupt good manners. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. I won't do it. I know better than them. If you walk with them, you too will become covetous. The Bible has said, once you spot it, withdraw. End of story. Next verse. But godliness. Oh my God. With what? Contentment. Is what? Let me paraphrase that you know, and bring out the spirit behind the statement, what it means is this. If you are godly like God and you learn contentment over time, it's going to bring great gain. You know how Jesus said it? He said, in this lifetime, you will receive a hundredfold of houses and children and mothers and lands. That's great gain. It's coming, but you have to be patient for it. You have to wait for it. You have to wait for it. True prosperity from God always takes time because God works on your character. God will never give you what your character cannot handle. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper even as direct proportionality. We learned it in secondary school. Your soul prospers. So, if you want to prosper, how many people want to prosper materially? How many people want great gain here? Put the hand up. If you don't buy that, a great game. I'm about to give you a prophetic blessing. Put the hand. Let's I can see. Say, <laughs> if you want great gain, I don't. That's not gain. No. If you want great gain, put the hand straight. The straighter it is, the greater the gain. <laughs> okay. Now, the next thing is now turn to your neighbor and say, if you want great gain, you must have great growth. Put the second hand and give the Lord a clap offering. If you want great gain, you must have great growth. If you don't have great spiritual growth, you're not going to have great gain. And if gain comes, it's not God. Hello? Hello? That's the problem we're suffering today. Next verse. Jesus help us. For we brought nothing into this world. Ah, and it is certain. It is certain. I didn't hear you. Say it with certainty. Say it with certainty. We can carry nothing out. The only thing you are going to take is what you wrote on your mind. That's the only thing you leave this planet with. The revelation knowledge and the knowledge of God and the character of God that you put into your mind, your will, and your emotions, that's the only thing you are carrying out. You are not going to carry out your car. You're not going to carry out your land. You're not going to carry out any material thing. So why don't you work on getting your soul? Then when you get your soul saved, then you get all the other things added to you. Enjoy them while you are here. Then you leave them and you go away with your true treasure. Yes. The true treasure is the one of the heart. The true treasure. 
Am I talking to anybody here? Uh, if I can change the mentality of this generation, God would have helped me. We have a whole army of Christians who know nothing about learning contentment. They, they, don't, they, they don't even hear it taught. Everybody preaches from Philippians chapter 4, only verse 19. <laughs> 4, 1, 9. <laughs> Next verse, we've got to close. It says, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Next verse. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Turn to your neighbor. Does that mean God doesn't want us to be rich? Turn to say, of course God wants us to be rich. Jesus became poor that we might be rich. It is the will of God that we spend our years in pleasures and our days in prosperity. So what's he talking about? He said, before you get rich, get rich spiritually. That's what he's saying. As you are getting rich materially, make sure you are matching it with your spiritual prosperity. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. The word snare is old English. It means trap. Into many foolish... Huh? What's wrong with you? And hurtful lusts we drown men in destruction and perdition. My wife actually had a vision of this thing many years ago. I think the year was 1992. It's 21 years now. God gave her a vision. And she saw people, if people were members of the church, some of them are gone now. You know, they were drowning inside the prosperity trap. She saw them being drowned. You know, they were, they were, they were you know, like a man who is swimming. And then persons are, the, the, the floods of prosperity that is not from God was drowning them. And it has actually happened. We've seen people whom this has happened to in destruction and what? Perdition. Next verse. For, ah, this is one of the greatest statements in the Bible. The love of money is the root of all evil. I've said it earlier today. I'm going to say it again. If you remove the love of covetousness, all evil in the world will disappear. The, is, the scripture cannot be broken. That's why I'm teaching what I'm teaching. Oh, I just got a fax. Oh, glory to God. Necromastophrenes. You know what the fax just said? I just got a fax from heaven. He said, I am coming for a glorious church without spots, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. He said, and the way I am going to achieve it is I'm going to remove covetousness from my church. Because covetousness is the root of all spots, blemish, wrinkle, or any such thing. Sailor, this is the root. So once we grab the root, all the wrinkles will just disappear. That's why he told me to teach it. If you get rid of covetousness in your life, you, you remove the root of all evil. Notice, go and check back. Any mistake you make, anything you want to do, you will find that there is something inside that is trying to make you do something that you are not ready for. Covetousness is the root of pride. Because after all, let me tell you something, bro. nobody loves Naira. Nobody loves Dollars. Do you love Doshmak? Uh, or Euro? You don't love Euro. You don't love Naira. You don't love, uh, how can you love Naira? Hey, boy, if I put one million Naira on your bed, in your house, and I say sleep on it, you will not be comfortable. You don't love the Naira. You love what the Naira can buy. So when we're talking about the love of money, we're not talking about the love of Naira or the love of sterling, or the love of uh, uh, dollars, or the love of euros. We're talking about the love of what it can buy. So, the love of money is not really the love of money per se. It is the love of what money gives. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what it really is. That's what it really is. Am I talking to anybody here? Oh, glory to God. The love of money for which some have coveted after. Which while some coveted after, they have what? You will not err from the fatal. 
You see, this, this covetousness thing, it was S.G.L. too. Great prophet of God. Yes. He said this to your young men over 30 years ago. The first person I ever heard preach prosperity was Pa Elton. I heard him before I heard Kenneth Hagin. Pa Elton told us, he said, he, I will never forget, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, 9, 8, he said, you can never forget it. He taught us. I wasn't there. It was a CSSM meeting in Joss in 1977. I was still an unbeliever at that time. But I got born again and my friend brought it to London and I listened to the tape. I will never forget it. He said, God doesn't just want to bless you. He wants you to be a millionaire. Back then, millionaire was something to us. You know, today we say billionaire or trillionaire. You know? And he said, he said, he said, but I will never forget S.G. Elton. God bless him. You know? In fact, tomorrow my wife and I are going to go and see my Elton. You know? And this great man of God, he said this. He said, God wants you to be a millionaire. He said, but I will never forget. He said, you have to be careful. The money is for the establishment of of the kingdom on the earth. Oh, he quoted the scripture. He said, distributing to the necessity of the saints. He said, yes, God wants you to have good things. He said, but be very careful of this. Um, I will never forget SGL to prophet. It came to pass exactly. Be careful of this. You know, he's British. And you know, the British and the Americans always have, you know, they're like, uh, sibling rivalry, you know. He said, but be careful of this American prosperity message. It will destroy the church in the years to come. And it has. Erd from the faith. I, I got another fax. I got another fax. Darling, simple question. What is the goal of our faith? Once you get on the covetous road, it takes you off from the salvation of your soul. Covetous? That, uh, that's exactly what's happened in the last 30 years. The covetous message, the, cov the, 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 the distorted covetous prosperity message has caused us to err. It's just like a guy who wants to aim at a goal post. Then instead of the ball going straight to the goals, it it veers off course. The, the goal, instead of scoring, scoring in the goal of the salvation of your faith, the ball veers off course and goes off because your aim was wrong because of covetousness. Heard from the faith. That's what he's talking about. And that's what Pat Elton was talking about. Years ago, 30 years ago, 1980, 81. And said, he said, it will destroy. He said, God wants you to be prosperous. He said, but be careful of this American prosperity message. I asked Pa, I said, God, what makes great men make mistakes? Pelton looked at me. I went to see him in Leisha. He said, quick growth is weak growth. Quick growth. He said, if you grow too fast, too quickly, it will be weak. It will have no root. He said, grow with God. And I thank God I listened. I thank God I listened. Ah, uh, I'm not better than anybody else. Who, I'm not. We would, uh, it's, it's scriptural principles. You don't get rid of covetousness. You will veer off. You will stop using faith for the salvation of your soul. You start using faith only for things. And it will land you in idolatry pierce themselves through with many sorrows scripture the blessing of the lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it you know what that tells you there is a blessing that is not of the lord shall we this is logic now this is simple logic now shall we also say then that if it comes with sorrow, then the blessing did not come from the Lord. So all blessings don't come from God. Q E D. God's blessing is not less like I said. God's blessing is with patience. 
Be ye followers of them who through faith, not faith alone, no, and patience inherit the promises. Let's say, guess it doesn't inherit nothing. Because it may have faith, but it has no patience. Solid Bible. Verse 11 and close. But thou, if he's talking to you, let me see your hand. Now, I'm going to help all of you now. Turn to your neighbor and say, oh, man of God. And you're not the DM with Gene here. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But thou, oh, man of God. I'm talking to you. Wale, oh, man of God. Pastor G, oh, man of God. Mommy Sarah, oh, man of God. We are all men of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, but thou, oh, man of God. Behave like a man of God. Flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Next verse. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art also are called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. If you follow the fruit of the spirit, you will learn contentment. Let us pray. On the Air has been brought to you by Christ Life Ministries, the outreach arm of the Scripture Pastor Christian Center. You can be a part of this program by becoming a faith partner with Christ Life Ministries. For details, contact Christ Life Ministries, number 12, Oshutoku Avenue, Bodija, Ibadan. You can also download our weekly messages from our website, www.spcconline.org, while our email address is scripturepastor at spcconline.org. You're welcome to worship with us at the Scripture Pastor Christian Center Auditorium, Polytechnic Road, Sango Ibadan. God bless you.